Hello, my name is Marcus Nevitt. I'm a first year student enrolled in the Geomatics Engineering Technology Program at Bellingham Technical College in Washington State. Other group members involved in this project are second year Geomatics students, Ty Walker and Pat Hafner. This presentation is a summary of a year long group project for a course called Innovation Lab. This course is a requirement for students who are awarded a scholarship from the National Science Foundation and are studying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM subjects. All three of us are currently pursuing careers in the field of land surveying. The Innovation Lab is a year-long project-based course where a group of students identify a problem in their local community and use their newly learned engineering skills to help solve it. This timeline shows our progression by quarter where we identified a problem to solve, created a plan, and then carried it out. It was a valuable experience to work as a team to identify a problem, work with professionals, brainstorm a solution, and then follow through with the plan. Our project client was the Swinomish tribe. They are a Native American community located on Fidalgo Island in Skagit County, Washington. The Swinomish Reservation is home to a community of coastal Salish people that descended from tribes that thrived on the Skagit and Samish River valleys. For thousands of years, the Salish people lived a lifestyle centered around abundant saltwater resources that included salmon, shellfish, and marine mammals, as well as upland resources like cedar trees, berries, and wild game. The Swinomish tribe are dedicated towards improving the well-being of their people through social and cultural programs, education, economic development, and resource protection. The problem our group identified is climate change. The Swinomish Tribe Climate Change Initiative was a two-year study carried out by the tribe from 2008 to 2010 that assessed the impacts of climate change on their resources, assets, and communities. They estimated that about $102 million of residential and commercial property sites are in high-risk areas for sea level rise, and most of their community lives on or near waterfront. As you can see in the coastal impacts diagram from the study, there are several coastal and community factors that are dependent upon the health of the environment in the Swinomish Reservation. As land surveyors, we can play a significant role in helping organizations understand the impacts of climate change as it pertains to what is precisely happening on the surface around them. Therefore, our project goal was to utilize our land surveying skill sets to help the Swinomish tribe mitigate potential damage from future impacts of climate change. To help mitigate impacts of climate change, our project liaison Jacob Tolley of the Swinomish Tribe GIS Department suggested we make a topographic map of an area where the tribe is considering building a new senior citizen center. The proposed site is in a centralized tribal area near La Conner, Washington, and is at an elevation of about 70 feet above sea level. We created a map of the area that shows detailed elevation contours, approximate property boundaries, tree locations, and nearby buildings. This map will be useful information for community planners to help them decide if they want to build a senior citizen center here. Here are the basic steps we took to create the topographic map. First, we researched records of previous surveys of the area through the county assessor's website. Then we calculated approximate coordinates close to our project site by using coordinate geometry, otherwise known as COGO. Then we found a point in the field that could be our point of beginning for our data collection. Then we set up a GPS on that point to obtain a known and accurate position to begin our land survey from. Then we were able to use highly precise surveying instrumentation to collect topographic data of the site and record accurate field notes. Then finally, we uploaded our collected data into industry standard AutoCAD Civil 3D software, created a topographic map of the project site and delivered the map to the client. To position our survey into real-world coordinates, we needed to find an existing survey marker that had state plane coordinates already associated with it. In a plat map, we discovered a property corner on an adjacent parcel that had state plane coordinates. We used a known distance and direction and basic coordinate geometry from that established property corner to locate the property corner of the parcel that we were tasked with surveying. Then, we used these calculated coordinates and converted them from state plane to latitude and longitude using the National Geodetic Survey website. Finally, we input the resulting latitude and longitude coordinates into Google Earth Pro to determine a relatively precise location for our desired control point. This way, we could get an accurate visual as to where the control point would be located on the surface. When we got to the survey site, we used the latitude and longitudes and the aerial image obtained from Google Earth to estimate where we thought the property corner might be. 
Using a metal detector, we were able to find a buried metal rod composed of rebar with a labeled plastic cap cover located about two inches below the ground surface. We also found a Puget Sound Engineers brass cap monument next to a large totem pole at a nearby intersection, as well as a magnetic nail survey marker in the sidewalk near a parcel boundary. Survey markers like these are useful for referencing when making a detailed and accurate map of a potential building site. The next step was to set up a GPS over the control point that we found. The GPS allowed us to triangulate a precise and accurate point to start our survey from. We set up the GPS over the survey marker for two hours to collect data from several satellites. Once we collected enough data, we uploaded it to the Online Positioning User Service, also known as OPUS. OPUS is a free service of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration that uses the National Spatial Reference System to calculate accurate GPS data. This user service helped us locate an exact point on the ground in real-world coordinates. We used these coordinates to create an Excel file that contained the point number, northing, easting, elevation, and point description of the GPS location. We imported these files into our data collector and used it for the point of beginning on our survey. After getting our control point location loaded into the data collector, we were ready to start collecting topographic data around the site. We used a robotic total station and the data collector to record elevation, location, and point type. Some point types we collected were designated as ground, tree, fence, stump, center of road, edge of gravel, ditch, sewer, etc. Furthermore, every half an hour while collecting data, we made sure to check the accuracy of our total station setup to establish that the instrument was working within an acceptable tolerance of error. In our field notes, we made sure to include all significant information regarding the weather, instruments used, heights of instruments, point types we were collecting, diameters of trees, and a sketch of the area we were measuring. In total, we collected 326 points of data, which was enough to make a detailed topographic map of the area. After completing our data collection in the field, we were ready to import the data into AutoCAD Civil 3D software. We extracted the data, created one-foot topographic contours, input trees, roads, fences, and the facilities building. We used industry standard line types to represent the different features. We also plotted the map onto industry standard size with a professional title block and legend. Our deliverable was later approved by Jacob Tolley, our project liaison. Jacob Tolley had access to a surveying drone and software used for editing detailed aerial images. He demonstrated its capabilities by operating the drone and collecting aerial photographs of our project location. Using these images would be a beneficial addition to the dataset. Utilizing ArcGIS software with these aerial images overlaid with the topographic data we collected could produce a very informative map of the location for the proposed Senior Citizen Center. Another potential improvement to our project would be to perform a proper boundary survey of the site to obtain exact locations of the property boundary. This would require locating the remaining property corners and use a total station to measure the bearings and distances of the property boundary. Our two main contacts work at the GIS department for the Swinomish tribal community. Alyssa Kala is the land management head and Jacob Tolley was our project liaison and main contact. The GIS department for the Swinomish tribe has other projects they are working on that future students could potentially help with. For example, the forested residential rezone and the topographic map at Lone Tree Point were two other projects we considered while choosing our project during last fall quarter. Therefore, the GIS department for the Swinomish tribal community would be a good place for students to start next year when looking for a potential project. Thank you for your time and for viewing this presentation.